show you how I skin links. Uh, kind of explain it here before I get out the knife. And so on a lynx, their fur is pretty uniform all the way to the top of their foot. But back here, it's really, really thick. And if you cut up their back leg to this part, lots of times you're going to have a tough time getting it started and you'll tear the hide. So what I started doing is just go just at the start to the, the Achilles tendon there, right on the end of its heel, and that and a ring there, and it makes it nice uh, to skin. If you go up here, you're going to be fighting back here. And most of the time when you put them on the board, you're going to have to trim a lot of that off anyways. So just to show you that. And then here you got the little tail. Their tails are always matted up for some reason. Must be when they flick it and can't lick it or something. But same thing as a coyote. I'll start a couple inches up the tail, go up one side up the other and I'll try and do that in frame here if I miss it on one I'll watch we got a couple others there we can show you and I always make an initial cut from the bottom of their pad to their elbow and then when I get to their legs and shoulders I can just pull that out and then I'll be able to put it on the board and tack them open so they they dry nice just like on the back legs the fur is uniform right to their top of their their pad or their paw and uh but i don't take it all i just leave the top there their claws are very sharp so watch that and then on a lynx their neck is really really narrow compared to their head so that's a hard spot to pop and get over and then they have their tufts of ears when we do the ears we'll try and leave that on this one's freezer burnt a little bit i have to just watch that a lot of times they don't have a lot of burrs or anything like that they usually take pretty good care of themselves not much for mats but i just run my hands over and uh, i don't really brush i just run my hands over feel for anything and they're super easy to flesh i'll show you that and that's why I have this board here. Nice and narrow. This one's a little bit too wide for links. This one, you can see how narrow it is all the way down. And uh, it holds the links very well. Anyways, we'll get started here. And this is how you skin a links. So here's the the cut. Let's free it up. Same thing here. There's so much hair there it's hard to tell if you made it all the way through but the initial cut from the tail up. Skinny little bone there. Just find the groove. And then we're going to go up the tail here, up the back of the leg, into our opening. And then you can just free one side up. And then here, same thing. Free it up. See how that and these peel real easy. Just put your hand in there, work it so that it comes free, peels right off. We'll do the same to the other side. Sometimes you get a bit of a, a muscle stick on there, just pull that off. And then we'll go right down to the base of the tail.
screw that up. Work your fingers through to the back here. Pull that down. Get your tail stripper. Pop it off. Open the tip up. Just make sure it's nice and good. And give this a little tug down. And then you don't need the crotch on there, so we'll just take the knife. Open up and then pull it down part ways. So now we're gonna make sure you open it up from the ankle to the elbow there. You're starting at the dew claw, kinda. Kind of the base of the pad there. And uh, they're really fuzzy, these links so they give you all kinds of hair maybe back up a bit and then you just grab it and give it a good tug down we'll lift this up a bit and then just grab it by the hind legs again and pull until you come to the shoulders and once you get here, just like in a coyote or anything else, you can just take your stick, kind of pull that down. And once you get past the membrane here, you just push your stick through, pull it down. Same thing on this side. Pull it down. And it's only gonna go so far, then the rest you have to pull by hand. So we made the initial cuts on the other side here. So now I'm gonna push away and pull. And that'll come through. Same thing on the other side. Push and pull. And this is my initial cut right at the ankle, base of the pad, and then I'll just cut the off the back of the leg in one spot like that and then the next spot I gotta get over is the head so you can give this a little nick here you don't always need to do that I like to use my dowel you can just pull on it lots of times but if you have it you might as well use it so I just put the dowel on there we go you can see there's a little bit of blood or trauma to the head. That's just because it's uh, been snared. I'm not sure why that's got that hole there, but something tore. Usually they don't bleed there. And then you just cut and free up your ear. Go to the other side, free up an ear. Next thing you're gonna come to is an eye. Oh, and just be careful here because there's a little bit of trauma. It's hard to see where you're at. Little cuts. Normally it's a clear eyelid there. So I'm through, free it up the eye. From the corner of the eye to the edge of the mouth, right there. Free this side up. Excuse me, Blake. Back up a bit. So now I just free it down. Usually put my finger in the corner of the mouth. 
gives me something to pull on. Bring up the bottom lip. Then you come to the, the nose, the end of the cartilage. Just cut that straight off. And now we will uh, put it on the fleshing beam and flush it. So then you just slide her on the board. Because this one had a bit of trauma to the head, I'll put a little bit of sawdust on there. Absorb some of the juices. Fleshing knife. You're using a narrower board, right? Than what you would for cut Yep. Yeah. That's otherwise it wouldn't fit on there. A little tricky because their nose is rounded to get started, but clean up around the eye socket. <laughs> And just like you would with a kite, you can kind of roll the base of the ears up. Normally they're not this juicy, so... So this is the back of the ear and the cartilage. Clean that up after. On the other ear. Work up to the front of the ear. And lift it up, free up the cartilage and the back of the ear. And I was getting a little dull, but here's the cartilage, the front part of the ear. I'll cut straight through there. This one's the freezer burnt ear, so I have to be careful. Work it through until you get to the edge of the ear. We'll do it to this one as well. Grab my pliers. And then free it up. It goes in the bin. And this is the freezer burnt here, so it's gonna get tough right here. And it's starting to take the tough with it. Not much I can do about that. Once we come up to this side, and yeah, it's freezer burnt. It's a little bit of a tough. Clean off my blade. You know, it's just like the coyotes there. Start between the ears and work your way down the back. They don't have very much fat at all. Thin little membrane, and just push that off. Turn it just like a coyote. Quarter turn in the eye by the base of the ear. Work a little that membrane off. And they dry super quick links.
The only thing I don't really like about links is when you go to turn them on a board. If you wait two minutes too long, they're hard to hard to turn. What I mean by that is you gotta have your timing down just right. Otherwise you could tear the hide. Because you're gonna leave the legs on. And you gotta put the legs through the neck hole. And the neck holes are small to start with. Part ways down. I'll center it up. Looks like there's a scar here on its belly. So let me work my way around it. And just push it off the end of the hide there. We'll turn it again. Do the back. Another little scar there. Sometimes when they get caught, another lynx might be around and they give them bites and they're really cannibalistic, so they'll eat each other. Gotta be careful. Really thin leather on these puppies, so you can see those are like bite marks where something's gone through. Probably got caught and somebody else gave it a nip and said, hurry up, let's go. base of the tail usually there's a little bit of fat but it looks like we got her all and then we start on the legs again just keep working that membrane down One leg done, clean off your board. You can throw a little bit of sawdust on there to clean up that juice, but it's not bad. Work it down. Don't be in a rush.
this thin little membrane don't really have to take it off real dry I'm just being a little bit picky I guess and there we go so that's flushed nice and clean I'll put a stitch in here just to hold that together and then we'll uh, put her on the board. So just do a stitch. I always go from the first side out to the other side. It's a long string, so it takes a bit to pull it through. First side to the other side. side to the other side. I'll get that on the other side that scar I'll get some good good hide there pull it tight And then my last stitch there, just poke through, take the end, go around twice. Give it a, a tug. And I'll do that again. Go around twice. And it just bites and cinches up the knot there. And I'll trim off the end. And now we'll get it on the board. So we're going to put this on the board. Slide it on. Make sure it's centered. I always like to take the roughs and try and poke them down. Just looks a little bit better once they dry. You turn them. Center of the nose, center of the lips. Put it there. Give it a tap. Take a look. That looks good. Lay all the fur down. And then put her on the board here. And links. Your legs go on to the sides. So I kind of find the center of the leg there, to the center of the board. I'll go up and give it a pin there. I can feel I have a little bit more on that side so I can go here. And I'll do the same here. Flip it real quick and just pin that aside. You don't have to pull it tight, tight because it's going to shrink a little bit. Try and keep them so they're even. And then now I'll spread the Back the leg a little, the back end a little bit. Just like I do my coyotes. Just put a nail there. Put 
Then I'll pin the base. Make sure they're even. Then I kind of lay the fur forward a bit. And then I'll pin it. Basically, I just don't want it to fold over on itself. And then just one pin in the tail here. It's already split right to the end. Just put a pin there and then stick it onto the board, just like that. So all that will dry and tighten up. Go to the other side. And take my knife. And just lift up a little bit of loose skin there. Clean up that edge a little bit. Makes it just a, a little bit nicer. Attack the bottom of the leg so it's straight. And trim off anything you need to trim there. piece of skin then we'll pin these legs just like we did the other one so The nail fell out. It's okay, we'll put another one in. Just give it a squish there. We'll come to the head, the bottom lip. We don't need that on there. Just cut that off. Cut that off. Then the legs, take your cardboard. Same cardboards are used for coyotes. Same cardboard I use for the coyotes uh, ears. I use for the lynx legs. I'm gonna open this up. Sometimes your cardboard gets a little bit, bit used. You get a fresh piece, it'll hold it a little bit better. And whenever you turn a lynx, the legs stay on the inside. They used to want to have them on the outside but they found through the years, when they get drummed, they tear and rip the hide. So now they want it inside. And the reason why we leave it on, just to give that fur buyer a little bit extra leather or fur for that. So that's that part. We can put another pin here. Hold that open. I'm gonna flip it over one more time, or actually I'll go put it on the rack here, and then I'll pin the ears up. So I'll bring some pins with me. I'm 
then I just hang the legs over like that. I take the ears. And the ears are so thin though, they'll, they'll dry. No problem there. I just gotta get another pin I dropped. And then when we turn it, we'll put it all back on the outside with the ears. The legs stay inside. And all this will dry nice for us. So I put these ones on the board about 20 minutes ago. And they're starting to dry, stretch out a little bit there in the neck already. Which is good. That's what we're after. They're pinned nice. The noses are up and I have a fan up there that's always blowing across my drying boards. So I know I'm gonna have good air circulation. And these ones here, these links, I'll turn in about four hours, three to four hours. I'll come up back out and check, see how dry they are. Uh, if you let them go too far, they're gonna be a nightmare to turn and yeah, you'll be frustrated. So the best thing to do is come out and check like you can hear now, it's a little bit tacky. When we come back, I'll let you hear and see what uh, what it looks like. So a couple hours later, the nose are pretty dry. You can hear that that's uh, dried up a bit. And the bottom's nice and dry. So I'll turn it here. Just like I always do with that stick. So just to make sure nothing spoils on me, I'll take a little borax. Put it where the ears were, kind of work it in a bit. Cure it, get on the lips a, a bit, make a pocket, fill it up, rub it in there. It's all soaked up a little bit. Next spot I'll treat is in the armpits. This keeps it from spoiling or slipping there. There's a big bunch to rub it in. And then you just take your ears, stuff them in. Make your pocket with the nose, you put that in. Now I'll reposition the camera. Put the stick through there like that. And the neck seems a little bit stiff right now, so I'm gonna kind of work it a bit more than normal. Once you get past the neck, this is pretty much good. And then the legs are going to go in and get it tight again. But this is a lot easier to find than turning it by hand. And then the belly part, just like in the other tight clips I've done before, turn that first and then turn the back legs down. So you don't turn the belly. And now I pretty much just slide it back on the board and I'll take the front legs and push them down with my fingers so it ends up nice like this one here. So everything's brushed, the legs are tucked in, they go down towards the belly 
And then I'll let them dry for the lips get nice and stiff. I'll show you here once I turn the other two. One thing you can do if your animal has a stiff neck is just uh, break the leather a bit. Just, just kind of work it. So when you go to turn it, it's not quite as stiff. Just make it a bit flexible. Careful if it's really, really dry. You'll have to moisten it first. Just otherwise you crack it. This one's not quite there yet. So I'm just kind of working it. And then I'll turn it with the stick here. After you get them on the board, you can give them a little brushing. The roughs right here, I like to get them nice and pointed down, take a look at it, make sure it's centered on the board. Brush them out. And that, my friends, is how I do links. I hope to do other videos like this on each species that I handle. If you think it's a good idea, comment below. Hopefully you guys like and uh, subscribe here and we'll continue on with what we're doing. I enjoy your guys' comments and try and get back to everybody. So catch you guys at the next set.